compulsive quilters. Today's video clip is on the hen house quilt that is behind me. Some of the things that I'll go over today have to do with the workflow of this quilt. And I, this is a casual video. I just walked around and talked about what I was doing and how it benefited me in accomplishing getting the quilt together. I hope you'll enjoy it. One of the things that I'll have in a separate video that has to do with the nesting box. You can see it, uh, the nesting box is this part that the little hen sits on and you have to position this. So I'll go over that in the separate clip. One of the other things that I'll go over will be the aftermath of making the clip. I'll make, the, the, in order to make this not too long, that is the reason why I'll have the separate clips. So the aftermath will be just a short evaluation of how the whole project went. For the last couple of days, I've been working on the hen house quilt. It has taken on a life of its own in just about every space in my little sewing room has been taken over and also my dining room. My husband has a project going on his machine over here. Um, it's really our machine, but um, he's got a, a great big scene from Venice. The hen house quilt has spread into my dining room and I have a, uh, a, my table fully stretched out so that I can use it for cutting and positioning and just preparing for this. I have all my designs laid out. I have a, a ton of stabilizer ready and a, an extra hoop. I have um, all of my blocks that are both completed and incompleted in stacks to where they belong in the quilt. And I have them on an ironing board. So like I said, things are just getting um, growing as far as this project goes. I decided to use my little cartoons with the chicken in the background so I could track what colors of applique I'm using as I'm going along. I am kind of doing this freestyle, which means I go to my stack every single time I decide to design and pick out my colors for it as I go. To keep up continuity, I decided my design before I went to bed last night. So I picked out all of my colors and the threads that I would be using on the next design and that way I don't really have to think about where I am in the process when I get up in the morning. The thread I like to keep organized with the fabric that it goes with. So I have my top thread, my bobbin thread, and my fabric. What this does is it keeps me from making mistakes when, um, both in the order that I'm doing things and also just maybe not forgetting to change out my bobbin thread my machine should normally pull applique um, the satin stitch to the back, but I'm having a little pull through, so it's about time for my machine to go to the spa and have a treatment. So a pair of hemostats and a pair of thread snips are always handy to keep right in front of the machine. The thread snips, when I close them, and I like these because they you have a squeeze grip on them, and then a spring action opens them up. So I can use the pointy end if I need to get into points on the applique, or I can actually, if I'm doing regular sewing, I can use this spread apart to feed things into my machine without getting my fingers close. On my particular pattern, the machine will run placement stitches, and I will use those, and I'll just simply float a piece of fabric over the top. And then I'll push start. And there I have my tack down stat stitches made. From this point, I will remove my um, the whole piece from the hoop. Now that I have my tack down stitches, I will remove my hoop from my machine. I have a little pair of curved applique or thread snip scissors that I like to use for this. I will begin snipping this out. I will, sorry. And the reason I like these is because the, the edge of the blade, I turn upward toward myself, the curve, and that way it just slides right along the fabric as I'm snipping this out. I'll snip across the top and this is where I have a little pair of hemostats here, or needle pullers, and I will use them to get a better grip on the fabric.
After that's done, I'll just return it for the next set of um, uh, in the stitch out that it's doing. When you come to the part of your design where you're about to do, or you've started your set in stitches, you may notice that you have a trace that comes to the outside of your design just a little bit. And there's a trace that comes to the inside. These are your underlay stitches. And the reason you have underlay is because it makes your applique or your satin stitches stick out a little bit higher. Just gives them a nicer finish. This is just a little closer look at what the stitches will look like and see how you can see how they stand up quite a bit from the applique. You can even on a camera you can catch this. And the beak is the same way. Now it's time to move on to the next section. I made a last minute change and I've decided to substitute in a different color. I'm using the same purple for the outline, but I decided that I wanted a little bit of more flashy contrast to the background fabric on this piece. Once I have my chicken stitched out, it's back to the machine for the satin stitch. Satin stitch is done around the body. Now it's on to the next part, the pocket. Or it's not a pocket really, it's a wing. So I've switched out this fabric for this fabric. And what that has necessitated is I have other choices that relied on this fabric. So I, these were my original choices, and now I'm going to switch those out. I pulled out additional thread containers in both green and blue, and I've decided that I want to go with the green for this. It definitely leans more in that direction. So I've quickly just gone around and looked at different colors to decide which one that I want. I am leaning toward either this one or this one. And I think that this one is a better match, although this one would be a nice outline too. I think in the end it's going to be this one. When I lay it over, it's actually almost transparent. So for these two thread colors, I decided that although this picks up both this green and this green very nicely, this second one is a little bit darker, and I always love an outline fabric, and it also picks up this green here. So this is the one that I'm gonna go with to outline this pocket. So I have my eyeball stitched out, and I've been having fun with this. It's a kangaroo fabric, or an aboriginal fabric and I love the spots that it has all over it, but it also has a lot of these places. And so very quickly, these are becoming my eyeball fabrics. When I place these, I wanna look at my placement and I also want to make sure that my, uh, the center is slightly forward or down or up so that it doesn't look, I don't know, like a complete circle. I just want it off to one side so it looks like the chicken is looking in one direction. This is how this looks with the tack down stitch complete around it. The satin stitch can add a whole lot of emphasis if you want to draw attention to a certain point. So that's one of the places it really shines. And this is, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's got a lot of gold printed in it. So this is a really shiny fabric. And I think the polyester thread in this really makes it it gives it a lot of emphasis. So one of the things that I've changed out from the original design was I didn't like the orientation of this wing. And so on my newer designs, I went ahead and left this like this. I'm not gonna go back and change it. I already have my background fabric, but I did change out the orientation of the wing because I like it better where it goes closer to parallel with the back. So here is the finished design that I've just done, and I like it. I like it. It's got a little bit of contrast there, and that the pocket seems to go well with the um, chicken body. One of the things that I might point out is um, when I make one of these, I make a mirror. I will often print in a mirror image, so I don't make a separate design for it. Um, and sometimes you want to change things out. This is one of those things where your cartoon really can become useful. So on, on the cartoon, I was looking and the chickens are facing 
outward and since they're in the center of the um, the center of the design I wanted these two chickens to face inward from their direction so this is from row three one two three and this one is from row four and so I changed the orientation and I could easily see this when I was working on my little cartoon here and um, it's easy to get lost in the details when you're working with something like this. So it's good, like um, all of these I like, they're all kind of facing inward, and all of these are facing inward. And so I like most of my chickens to face toward the center. It just leads your eye in. With all of these, desi with all of these designs, one of the things that I want to make sure that I do is when I remove it from the hoop, I want to make sure that I retain my little card here that tells me um, all of the pertinent information about it. So I'll just repin it and then I will add these to my row stacks. And that way I know that it goes on row number four and it's um, number three as far as its position. As I move on through my workflow, the next thing that I'll do is go back and I'll refer to my map and I'll decide that I have another chicken here and one here and I want to pick up my block from row five and it's in the number five position down the row and lay it into my hoop so I have a nice green piece of fabric here and this is for my block I've already decided that and I'm just going to take my pin off and I will pin it on there as soon as I get this set into the block or my block set into my stabilizer. So I've taken my block, which is 12 and a half inches square, and I have creased it right here and right here. From there, what I want to do is line it up in the center of my stabilizer, and it goes off of the center markings that are on my hoop. And I've just matched up the center with a chalk line, and at the top, the bottom, and the sides, and made a target there for where I put my fabric. I'll open up my fabric like this and just smooth it out a little bit. And all the lines are still lining up. I'll lay my hand on my block right here and just let it slide into the hoop. And once it slides into the hoop, it's uh, still sitting in its position on the top and I'll just press it down on the bottom and then make sure that it's nice and snug and tighten it up. Since I'm certain that this stabilizer here is out of the field where I will be embroidering, I will go ahead and pin my chicken to my work area. And it's the extra set of cartoons that I made. And like I said, it has row five, chicken number five, or block number five, and, this, uh, and the name of the chicken that I'm working on. So all my details are fresh on my mind. And the one thing is that I want my chicken um, to turn inward. So I will look at my machine, and I have a tiny little image here. And I'm noticing right off that my hoop size is wrong. I need a... Um, a 360 by 200 hoop size. So I will switch that. And check the right one. And then I'll get a 360 by 200. And my chicken is facing in the right and I want her to face to the left. So I will do a mirror image. And that will change the direction that my chicken sews out. I'm chain piecing these fabric strips and these will become my nesting blocks for the, for the hens that are sitting. You have all these done, then you just clip them apart with that little at the little point where they're held together and move on to the next. I've sewn together my strip sets into green, blue, green, 
and also into blue green blue when I put these together they'll make a checkerboard effect and in this application I'm going to put them together like this and they will go to um, at the bottom of the sitting hen so that's it for my workflow video on the hen house quilt I hope that it'll help you organize your own project when you're working on a quilt I'll be putting out additional videos on the nesting box part of this quilt and what helps with the nesting box for the chickens is also the same process that I use for the flowers on this quilt. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell.